My name is Matt Mercero. I'm a professional dog trainer. Good. Good one. That's a good job, girl. Very nice. About 13 years ago, a friend of mine introduced me to dog training and hunting. I got hooked. And three years, four years after that, I got my own dog and started training with the help of a lot of friends. Found a love for it. Found I was pretty good at it. And before long, people were asking me to train their dogs. And the business grew and kept growing and growing. And here we are, almost 10 years later, with a full kennel. We have developed a reputation for taking dogs that, on the hunting end, that have some talent and need to find their inner dog. They need to develop, and we help with that. Uh, we also have the ability to turn some behaviors around. As time goes on, we learn more and more about how to keep a dog from jumping on somebody or how to keep a dog from whining in the kennel or things like that. We've gotten pretty good at uh, problem solving. Some dogs are extremely easy to work with and pick up on things very quickly, which makes my job a real joy. Some dogs not so much. Some dogs are a handful. Some dogs require a little more attention. The process starts as soon as the dog comes in. We work on their obedience. We make sure that we can let them loose in the yard and they'll come back. If they won't come back, that's, that's an issue we have to focus on. As far as how long the process takes, that depends on the level that you're trying to achieve with the dog. If you're looking to take him all the way to a master national level, that will be probably most of their life. Training never stops. Get it, 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 get Camel has got the greatest personality of any dog I think I've ever worked with. She is a dork. But she's doing. There she is. <laughs> what a dork. Gotta love her. <laughs> and I, I love that about her. She has the ability to take, you know, a crappy morning and turn it around just by, by looking at you with that stupid look on her face. <laughs> When you connect with a dog, it makes training that much easier. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes you have to walk away from a dog because you just, you can't get on the same page with them. And that is not good for the dog, so you're better off finding another trainer. I learned that there are days when you just leave a dog to be. You let a dog be a dog. You don't push a dog through the process. The Number one thing that we try to focus on is keeping a dog's tail wagging, keeping them happy. If you're doing that, then you're doing it right. The moment that dog starts to shut down, you have to find another way. It took me a long time to understand that it's not one process for every dog. Every dog has their own way of learning. Once I learned that, training became more fun. Training became more of a challenge because each dog learns at a different pace they learn at a different level, different maturities and so forth will allow a dog to accept what you're trying to teach. Sometimes you have to stop and let a dog mature. Give them four or five months off and then bring them back and try again. Sometimes they just take it and run. It's a lot of fun, but the amount of pressure that is required is determined by your skill level. I think Evan Graham actually said that, if I'm not mistaken. He's one of the top trainers in the country. But when I read that, it resonated. Right. 
I would love to get the level of dog in to train so I can go to Master National. I have a number of friends, pro trainers, that have been to Master National and I'd like to achieve their level of success. We're doing really well, we're growing quickly, and eventually we'll get there.